We're going to call the meeting for Akron City Council to order. Clerk will read the roll. Baylor. Aye. Connor. Aye. Freeman. Aye. Fusco. Aye. Holland. Aye. Kamer. Aye. Lombardo. Aye. McKittrick. Aye. Malik. Aye. Neil. Aye. Homobian. Aye. Samples. Aye. Somerville. Aye. All members are present. At this time, if you will do voluntarily, if you wish to, please stand so that we may be led in prayer by Dr. Samuel Hampton II, who is the pastor of the Faith Place. Immediately following our prayer, will be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by Councilwoman Holland. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and praise you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you and praise you for our elected leaders. Father, we continue to pray for wisdom to guide and direct them to order their steps. Father, we pray for Akron as a whole, that you would keep us, that you would give us blessings and favor, Lord God, as we continue to do your work to impact a better community. Lord, we thank you for it on today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag. The minutes from our previously held meeting have been provided. Are there any additions or corrections? If not, is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Roll call on final passage. Baylor, Connor, Freeman, Fusco, Holland, Kamer, Lombardo, McKittrick, Malik, Neal, Amobian, Sample, Somerville. The minutes pass 13 to 0. Before you, you have the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Roll call on final passage. Baylor, Connor, Freeman, Fusco, Holland, Kamer, Lombardo, McKittrick, Malik, Neal, Amobian, Samples, and Somerville. The consent agenda passes 13 to 0. We do have three public hearings scheduled for this evening. So I'm going to ask if there's anyone here in the audience that is going to testify at one of our three public hearings, if you'll please stand at this time. So if you are here regarding 101 Fulmore Avenue, or 917 East Talmadge Avenue or 808 Allen Street and you wish to speak before the body, please stand so that you may be sworn in by a member of our law department. Those wishing to testify during one of the public hearings, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth? If so, please answer, I do. Notice is hereby given that the following public hearing will be held by the Council of the City of Akron on Monday, July 19th, 2021, during the regular council meeting at 7 p.m. in the Akron City Council Chambers, 166 South High Street. Ordinance authorizing a conditional use to construct storage buildings at 101 Fulmer Avenue. Mr. Antonucci. Thank you, Madam President, members of Council. Uh, Executive Properties LLC is requesting permission to establish a storage facility on the subject property. The uh, proposed storage facility consists of six single-story buildings of various sizes and purpose. Uh, The uh, architectural renderings depict exterior materials consisting of tan-colored vertical metal siding with the green standing seam uh, roof system. The buildings have been designed and laid out such that all overhead access doors for the storage units would face the interior of the property. A chain link fence would be placed 20 feet back from all three streets, allowing for ample landscaping and plant beds between the fence and sidewalks. Access to the facility would be through uh, two keypad controlled gates, uh, 16 feet wide, toward the north end of Fulmer Avenue and the uh, west end of Spade Avenue frontage. Drives would be asphalt paved. A six feet in height solid fence uh, will be installed along the property line shared by the adjacent residential uses in order to screen the activity 
and provide a consistent appearance between properties. The planning staff is of the opinion that the storage facility is a suitable transitional use between the electric substation and industrial use to the west and north and the residential properties to the south and east. Uh, the site is easily accept accessible from arterial streets and highways, should not create a significant increase in traffic to the residential streets. The low level of activity associated with the storage facility should not be a disruption in this residential neighborhood. Again, planning staff, Office of Integrated Development and Planning Commission recommend approval subject to conditions. Thank you so much. Is there anyone here in the audience who wishes to speak in favor of this ordinance? Anyone who wishes to speak in favor? So you may approach the podium and just please give us your name and your address. About three and a half years ago and been clearing brush and tearing down the existing building and trying to clean it up um, and one thing about 80 percent of the property has already been approved and we have permits we're only kind of asking for one little portion to have conditional use zoning which is towards the back but um, other than that we're just looking forward to hopefully get approval and get started okay thank you so much thank you. Is there anyone else here in the audience who wishes to speak in favor of this ordinance? Is there anyone here in the audience who wishes to speak against? Anyone here in the audience who wishes to speak against? Seeing and hearing now, we will close our public hearing. Councilman Fusco. Yes, thank you, President Somerville. I'd like to pull the committee for a favorable recommendation. Um, Kamer? Aye. Connor? Aye. Baylor? Aye. Sample. Recommendation of the committee is favorable if we suspension of the rules. Thank you. Are there any objections on suspension of the rules? Seeing and hearing none, the rules have been suspended. Yes, thank you. Uh, we've heard the uh, recommendation from the planning department um, as well as the uh, planning commission. I know the ward council person has uh, done extensive uh, research into, in terms of this conditional use. There are 16 conditions that we're expecting that the uh, petitioners willing and going to uh, abide by. So therefore, we're recommending approval this evening. Thank you. Thank you so much. The rules have been suspended and the committee's report is favorable. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Roll call on final passage. Baylor, Connor, Freeman, Fusco, Holland, Kamer, Lombardo, McKittrick, Mollick, Neal, Amobian, Sample, Somerville, and it passes 13 to zero. Notice is hereby given that the following public hearing will be held by the Council of the City of Akron on Monday, July 19, 2021, during the regular council meeting at 7 p.m. in the Akron City Council Chambers. Ordinance authorizing a conditional use to construct an automatic car wash at 917 East Talmadge Avenue. Mr. Antonucci. You, Madam President, members of Council, uh, Talmadge Avenue Enterprises proposes to establish a rub duct auto wash at this location. An automatic and or production line type car wash requires conditional use approval. The primary uh, brick building with gable roof uh, will be used to house the in-bay automatic car wash. Petitioner proposes that a 12-foot wide addition running the length of the structure along the east side will house the machinery and equipment for the automatic wash. The second structure behind the first is proposed to be raised to allow for space on the property for improved vehicular access and traffic circulation to the entrance of the wash bay. Vehicles would circulate to the back of the lot and enter through the rear and exit through the front of the building onto Talmadge Avenue. The automatic car wash would be open for operation 24 hours, seven days a week. It is not intent intended that any car vacuums will be positioned on the property. The proposed automatic in-bay car wash should not have a negative impact on the surrounding area. The proposed use is compatible with the surrounding commercial businesses. It will be located along a main traffic corridor that will provide for easy access to and from the site. Landscaping will uh, be improved and updated on the site. Petitioner currently owns the rubber duck car wash at 1501 Copley Road, which is currently in operation and appears to be well maintained and in good working order. Office of Integrated Development, Planning Staff, and Planning Commission recommend approval subject to conditions. 
Thank you. We will now open our public hearing. Is there anyone here in the audience who wishes to speak in favor of this ordinance? Anyone here who wishes to speak in favor? Anyone here that wishes to speak in favor? Is there anyone here that wishes to speak against this ordinance? Anyone here wishing to speak against? Seeing and hearing none, we will close our public hearing. Councilman Fusco, what's the pleasure of the committee? I'd like to pull the committee for a favorable recommendation, suspension of the rules. Kamer? Aye. Connor? Aye. Baylor? Aye. Sam samples? Aye. Any objections on suspension of the rules? Seeing and hearing none, the rules have been suspended. Yes, thank you. I know the Ward Council representative is in favor of this. This is the, um, um, there's conditions, like seven, eight conditions that have to be complied with in terms of this particular use. Uh, previously, it was a car wash. It was a uh, hand car wash, I guess. Uh, this mm -hmm. is gonna be automated, so therefore they had to come in for this conditional use request. So we're recommending approval this evening. Thank okay. you. Thank you. The rules have been suspended. The committee's report is favorable. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Roll call on final passage. Baylor, Connor, Freeman, Fusco, Holland, Kamer, Lombardo, McKittrick, Malik, Neal, Mamobian, Sample, Somerville, and it passes 13 to 0. Notice is hereby given that the following public hearing will be held by the Council of the City of Akron on Monday, July 19th, 2021, during the regular council meeting at 7 p.m. in the Akron City Council Chambers. Ordinance authorizing a conditional use to construct a permanent supportive housing facility at 808 Allen Street, parcel 670-0086, 670-3755, and 672-4566. Mr. Antonucci. Thank you, Madam President, members of Council. New Frontier Homes is requesting permission to construct an eight-unit supportive housing facility on this property. The petitioner proposes to construct a single-story, 6,000-square-foot uh, structure on the 20,000-square-foot lot. Construction materials will consist of vinyl siding and asphalt shingled roof, access to the eight-space paved parking uh, uh, located along the western rear elevation of the building will be uh, accessed through a curb cut at the southeast corner of the property. The main entrance will contain an open porch overhang and be sited along the east facing Allen Street. All four sides of the building will provide interior access. Joanna House originally received approval in 2019 to build a supportive housing facility for men or women combating either addiction and or homelessness on a portion of this site. Uh, but the building was not constructed and the conditional use has expired. However, the Tober Development Company Family and Community Support Services, FCS, and Community Support Services, CSS, have recently partnered to develop a total of 45 scattered site uh, family supportive housing units throughout Akron and Summit County. While FCS will eventually be the owner of this and all other property, CSS will provide supportive services for the proposed eight unit apartment building that will be known as Joanna House Two. Uh, the families will receive case management and other individually tailored intensive supports that may include integrated health and behavioral health care, parenting interventions and supports, child development education, employment services, child care and nutrition assistance and legal services. The eight unit supportive housing unit is well designed and will be a positive addition to this neighborhood. The development meets code requirements uh, regarding setback, parking, landscaping and open space. Uh, the amount of traffic and activity at the site should be minimal and not pose a disruption to the neighborhood. The Office of Integrated Development, Planning Staff, and Planning Commission recommend approval subject to conditions. Thank you. We'll now open our public hearing. Is there anyone here in the audience who wishes to speak in favor of this ordinance? If you do, we're just going to ask that you approach the podium and you can give us your name and your address. Hello everybody, my name is LaSalle Harris. My address is 505 Beacon Street, Akron, Ohio, 44311. So I'm the director founder of the Joanna House Two, and um, our vision was to do the permanent supportive housing to help homeless population to um, get off the streets and be productive in the community. And we had a little loophole, so we um, partner with Community Support Services, who I've been working with for seven years as a recovery specialist, and 
and Tober Construction. So I'm grateful that, you know, me coming from a 23 year addiction to where I'm at now to be a productive citizen in society, I would like for other people to have that opportunity too. We also uh, run a hoop house. We have the vegetables we take down for the last four years to Summer Lake and we sell the produce to help the ladies um, earn a stipend to buy, you know, personal products or whatever. And so I think that, you know, this vision would be a great improvement for, to, for the south side because I was raised on the south side since I was 15 years old and I'm still there in the neighborhood. So please pass it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here in the audience who wishes to speak in favor of this ordinance? Is there anyone here in the audience who wishes to speak against? Anyone here that wishes to speak against? You can please stand. Did you, were, you, were you sworn in, sir? You can approach the podium. Yep. And just give us your name and your address. My name is uh, Dylan Pinowski. I live at 837 Allen Street. That's the one we are talking about, correct? Allen Street? Right now? Yes. Okay, just wanted to clarify. <clears throat> um, so I want to start off by saying it's not necessarily that I'm against having that there. Um, I do want people to get the help that they need. I think that's very important, especially in this city. We have a lot of problems with that. Um, however, I do think that maybe finding a better suitable place for it would be a better option. Um, I say that based on the recent transgressions that have happened in our neighborhood. Um, the past four days, police have been out there every day, at least every three or four hours, talking to somebody. We've had four people arrested. Um, just a month ago, we actually had the crime scene out there. There was somebody taken into custody. They had found an infant in a basement. Um, there was a squatter house that was supposedly condemned. Five people were put out on the street. Um, if you walk around the block, there's a section of woods that is just a squatter zone. There's trash, clothes, tents, burnt rubble. Um, it's, it's not, like I said, it's not that I don't want these people to get help. It's that I think that in this neighborhood, it could potentially cause them harm more so than good. But that being said, there's also, you know, a liquor store right down at the end of our street. There's a strip club right around the corner from there. There's, you know, police. We've had the SWAT team on the adjacent street next to us, you know, the past four or five months. They've been there at least four or five times. I mean, they've shut down those streets before, and I haven't been able to get home after work at eight o'clock at night. That's, I really, like, I cannot phrase this enough. Like, I want the, these people to get their help. I think rehab is important, but I think finding a better suitable place for this would be better. I mean, if it's gotta be in that neighborhood, I mean, that's fine. There's a place right next to the gas station, BP. It, it's just a vacant lot. There's nothing there. It's right next to the highway. There's really not a lot for anybody to get into trouble with there. There's a gas station across the street and a family dollar. I mean, there's, that would be a, a much better place to put it. I don't think that my neighborhood would be the best place for this place to be. Thank you. Is there anyone else here in the audience who wishes to speak against? Anyone here in the audience who wishes to speak against? So seeing and hearing none, we will close our public hearing. Councilman Fusco. <coughs> Excuse me. I'd like to pull the committee for a favorable recommendation. Kamer? Aye. Connor? Aye. Baylor? Aye. Samples? Any objections on suspension of the rules? Seeing and hearing none, the rules have been suspended. Yes, thank you. There's a considerable amount of uh, conditions that's placed on this. Uh, this council had approved this a uh, couple of years back, um, but that expired. Uh, and as a matter of fact, what's happened is, is now they're going to add on to the facility. They've acquired additional land. Our charge here as a council is to look at the land use when it comes to conditional use zoning. And that's exactly what we're doing here. The gentleman that was here, we appreciate all of his comments. And I know uh, Ms. Samples like to meet after the meeting with them to discuss the concerns within the neighborhood. Um, and they, uh, they certainly sound valid, but in terms of our charge this evening, uh, that's the conditional use request on this uh, particular parcel, parcels. And so therefore, given that, we're gonna uh, recommend approval this evening. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilman Fusco. 
The rules have been suspended. The committee's report is favorable. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Abstention. Oh, one abstention. Roll call on final passage. Baylor, Connor, Freeman, Fusco, Holland, Kamer, Lombardo, McKittrick, Malik, Neal, Samples, Somerville. It passes 12 to zero with one abstention by a Mobian. We'll now move right into our old business, planning and economic development. Councilman Fusco. Time on four through and including seven. The request of the committee on eight is for consent agenda. Item eight will be placed in the consent agenda. Thank you. Um, the uh, request of the committee on nine, 10, and 11 is to file. Okay. Those items will be filed. And uh, request the committees for time on the ballots. Thank you. Okay, time will be granted. That concludes our old business. We'll now move into new legislation. Item number one, offered by Fusco, ordinance authorizing a conditional use to establish a kennel at 1833 Anton Drive and declaring an emergency. Councilman Fusco. For an advertised for public hearing. Item number two, offered by Fusco, ordinance authorizing a conditional use to construct an oversized internally illuminated LED sign at 1086 Vernon Odom Boulevard and declaring an emergency. Councilman Fusco. For an advertise for public hearing. Item number three, offered by Fusco, ordinance authorizing a conditional use to establish and construct an addition to a bed and be breakfast at 814 Bloomfield Avenue and declaring an emergency. Councilman Fusco. For an advertise for public hearing. Okay, these items will be referred. Item number four, offered by Fusco, ordinance approving the sale of certain city-owned vacant lots located on North Union Street and North First, First Street to Stark State College, determining said property is not needed for public use and declaring an emergency. Councilman Fusco. Consent agenda. This item will be placed on the consent agenda. Item number five, offered by Fusco, ordinance approving the sale of 655 West Wilbeth Road to Milo Real Estate Holdings, LLC, determining said property is not needed for public use and declaring an emergency. Councilman Fusco. Consent agenda. This item will also be placed on the consent agenda. Item number six, offered by Fusco, ordinance approving the sale of various city-owned properties pursuant to the city's A Lot for a Little program in order to facilitate the productive reuse of the property and to reduce the cost to the city and the taxpayers in maintaining vacant lots. Determining said property is not needed for public use and declaring an emergency. Councilman Fusco. Consent agenda. This item will also be placed on the consent agenda. Item number seven was withdrawn. Item number eight, offered by samples. Ordinance authorizing the director of public service or his designee to enter into an agreement or agreements and or legislation with the Ohio Director of Transportation for certain improvements on SR 241 and SR 764 and declaring an emergency. Councilwoman Samples. Um, thank you, Madam President. Um, consent agenda, please. This item will be placed on the consent agenda. Item number nine, offered by samples, ordinance authorizing the director of public service after publicly advertising for bids to enter into a contract or contracts for the replacement of the roof on the Greystone Hall and declaring an emergency. Councilwoman Samples. Um, thank you, Madam President. Um, earlier today, we did put this on a consent agenda, awaiting some information from Mr. Luttle. He has sent that information over. So if I could poll the committee for a favorable report. Um, Kamer. Holland, Lombardo, Aye. McKittrick. Aye. Okay. And with that, we like um, suspension of the rules. Okay, thank you so much. Any objections on suspension of the rules? Seeing and hearing none, the rules have been suspended. Um, this legislation is to replace um, a 30-year-old roof on the Greystone Hall, and so we're asking for its passage. Okay, the rules have been suspended. The committee's report is favorable. All in favor signify by saying aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Roll call on final passage. Baylor, Connor, Freeman, Fusco, Holland, Kamer, Lombardo, McKittrick, Malik, Neal, Amobian, Sample, Somerville. It passes 13 to zero. 
Item number 9A, offered by samples, ordinance authorizing the director of public service after publicly advertising for bids to enter into a contract or contracts for the replacement of the roof on the municipal building and declaring an emergency. Councilwoman Samples. Um, the committee is um, requesting suspension of the rules. Any objections on suspension of the rules? Seeing and hearing none, the rules have been suspended. Um, this legislation again is to replace the roof on this building as um, the municipal building that we are sitting in and we're asking for its passage. Okay, thank you. The rules have been suspended. The committee's report is favorable. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any oppose? The ayes have it. Roll call on final passage. Baylor, Connor, Freeman, Fusco, Holland, Kamer, Lombardo, McKittrick, Malik, Neal, Amobian, Samples, Somerville. It passes 13 to zero. Item number 10, offered by Freeman. Ordinance authorizing the director of public service and or purchasing agent after publicly advertising for bids to enter into a contract or contracts for the construction of miscellaneous plant improvements at the Akron Water Plant and, de and declaring an emergency. Councilman Freeman. Committee's requested this item be placed on the consent agenda. This item will be placed on the consent agenda. Item number 11, offered by Freeman, ordinance authorizing the director of public service after publicly advertising for bids to enter into a contract or contracts to replace the existing 4.3 MGD North Summit Supply Main Booster Station and declaring an emergency. Councilman Freeman. Consent agenda on this item as well. This item will also be placed on the consent agenda. That does conclude our new legislation for this evening. We will now move to the portion of our meeting that we refer to as our public comment period. When you hear your name, I'm gonna ask that you please approach the podium. Please give us your full name and your address. You will have three minutes to speak to this body. Speakers are reminded that this is an official meeting. Remarks should be kept respectful and germane to council business. Speakers should refrain from making any personal attacks. Anyone who breaches decorum will be ruled out of order and may be removed from council chambers. John Wesley Sharp. Oh, yes. And before we do that, if you have signed one of our forms and you're going to be bringing forth some comments, we're just going to ask that everyone please stand at this time so that you may be sworn in by a member of our law department. Those wishing to speak during the public comment period, please stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth? If so, please answer, I do. Thank you. All right, Mr. Sharp, thank you. Thank you. John Wesley Sharp, attorney and counselor at law, 730 Callis Drive, Suite uh, 1201, Akron, Ohio, 44301. I'm here representing the Coalition for a Safe Community. And as you are aware, we are a grassroots, on the ground organization. We support and assist victims of discrimination and racism in their families and confront the perpetrators. To our knowledge, the last police shooting in Akron was an unarmed Elijah Cade this past February. And there's a police shooting or serious beating, you counsel and mayor, you go into crisis mode like it never happened before. I promise you, I promise you, Akron City Council, I promise you, I pro promise you, Mayor Dan Horgan, that there will soon be another Akron Police Department killing, wounding, or use of excessive force causing a severe beating of a young black man. You, Akron City Council, and you, Mayor Horgan, should prepare and have a plan. In general, you must rein in the Akron Police Department. First, follow up on enforce the new powers you have given to Akron Police Auditor Philip Young. The supervisors and rank and file of the police department will try to avoid and frustrate what you have given him. He, just like they were doing with the case of body cam. Second, police training is not the answer. Their training and training manuals are more than adequate. Likewise, police community meetings are a waste of time. Third, make a proclamation, and this is heavy, make a proclamation that in regard to police misbehavior, you expect reprimands, you expect write-ups, 
you expect suspensions, firings, prosecuting, and jail time for offending officers. Make that proclamation. Next time something comes up, you're covered. Fourth, understand that the police department, like our entire criminal justice system, is a racist institution. They know what they're doing, and this is hard to say. They like it that way. Last, remember that they will not make any changes unless they are forced to. Even then, there must be vigilant follow-up. Economic development. In 2018, a national report lists Akron, Ohio as the, among the 10 worst cities in the entire country in economic development for blacks. In October 29, the Akron Beacon Sir, Journal article. Up. Pardon? Time up? Oh. Yes, your time is up. Thank you so much, Mr. Sharp. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. You're welcome. Sister Tanya Renee Lawrence. Good evening, Madam President elect Marco Somerville and your elect supporting Council, Akron City Council members. My name is Sister, Ren Sister Tanya Renee Williamson Lawrence Albrecht King Jr. I am the proud owner of two pit bulls, Sergeant Major Carter and a new addition, Admiral Captain Carter. The reason I am here is send a message to those in the, in the prospective position and you can get a message to them more effectively and more effectively than I, and expeditious than I can, cutting the red tape. I am a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. The message I am sending is which is this. I, I, that I received from him who is higher than I. This is well, this is a well done, well, well done, good job, faithful service, but the battle is not over. You've done a good job, but the battle is not over. Before we can stand as a united front, we must let the housekeeper clean house from top to bottom. For it's not done, if it's not done, no one will be free to acknowledge the truth, continue to live in the truth, to tell the truth, to execute the truth through guidelines of law and order. Because we, we are pointing one, point out one discretion with, uh, with, with, with one finger and the other three fingers directly point to us. And if, and it, and it is a known fact, and it is a proven fact, that the, where the head goes, the governing body elect appointed and other methods for acquiring the place on the council of Akron City, see that we represent the people of Akron, Ohio, for the most part, I believe, they believe in a higher power regardless of the name he is called. But us, on the most part, leave it to the hands of our trusted, faithful, Bible knowledge elected officials to represent us in our spiritual, our physical, and our mental needs. We, on the other hand, must, for the most part, want to party, bread, and have fun, and laugh 24-7 as our children and our grandchildren are already doing whether we approve of the source and masters they have defined as fun, party, and counts. Whether it requires others' life and welfare, their own life and welfare, or even their parents, their teachers, the law enforcement, or order, and who took a swear oath to uphold the law in their law-abiding fellow citizens as a faithful, humble servant. On the most part, as God as their witness, but the problem is the problem concerning the issues among our governing body. Well, you know, I, I, I respect protocol, and I, I, my Father in Heaven want me to do decent order, so I will submit the entirety of this statement and the entire statement I'd like to, to uh, Councilwoman uh, Linda O, I ain't gonna mess up your last name because I respect names, to read and to, uh, 
share at you at your own discretion. I'll give you my phone number and address if you want to contact me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Lawrence. You're welcome. Donald Bessemer. How do you do? How do you do? I've been here before. I've seen some friendly faces. I see all these faces. I, I, it seems like there isn't anybody, they're all happy. Everybody's fed. Have you thanked the farmer today that's fed you? Like this, this, this council helped me stay in business by putting our land in an agricultural district. It's chapter 929 of Ohio Code that keeps farmland farming, the last farm in city limits. Now, the reason I'm here is, I went to, Akron wants to do a resurface our street. And I went to the auditor's office and I got all the frontages. I have going on 5,000 feet of frontage. Akron's preparing to send me a bill for almost $54,000 for Bessemer Farms. Now, once before, in the agricultural district, uh, you guys had asked me for leaves, to pick the leaves up and stuff. And you helped keep a farmer farming. Keep a farmer farming, you'll get hungry. There's no getting around it, you know? But I need help on this. I, we just can't afford to farm and pay the city of Akron $52,000 as a street reserve. So, and I, I thank you for your time and trouble very much. And I'll be back. Help me this time. Help me, help me. How's that sound? Thank you so much, Mr. Bessemer. And I'm sure there's someone that'll be able to speak with you well, I hope after the meeting, okay? Okay. He's right here. Thank you. Thank you. Apostle Lett. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. All right, I know there's some life in this place. Uh, Councilman Neal uh, Levita is here. She said that you had told her to come, but she didn't have, she didn't get here in time to uh, fill out the speaker's form. So I don't know if you Apostle some... Lett, I'm yes. just gonna ask that you direct your comments to the chair here, okay? Okay, Thank you. Uh, chairwoman. There's a young lady who, want, who counsel, the Councilman Neal had asked to come so she could speak per, pertaining to some issues, but she was not here in time because she had to try to find parking um, and miss the speaker's form. So I don't know what your rule is if you make exceptions to okay. let her speak. Good evening, everybody. I was looking at the, uh, my name, name is Reverend Pamela M. Pinkney Butts, and I am, on a walk of faith that's very unique, and I'm also a candidate in this election, the congressional election. Some of you heard me speak at Bucknell. And I've, I've, when I was looking at the agenda for this evening, I noticed that most of your items were dealing with housing and other forms of buildings that deal with infrastructure. And it, it came to me that uh, landlords are not held accountable enough because we have House Bill 251, Ohio House Bill 251 now uh, in committee, which addresses mold, which is not really being uh, addressed as it should be. And also we have United States Code 10, 2891A, which also gives accountability to landlords. And some people feel that because a person is disabled, mentally ill, senior, homeless, or whatever the condition may be that they may find themselves needing a place, not just wanting a place, landlords are not held accountable for mold issues which cause brain damage and other environmental issues. Would you please, as you work on this legislation, look into that, please. We, and I noticed that there's a, a bishop that has a church in this process. The church is for healing. And we don't want a bishop to be sold a piece of property that has mold in it that people need to be healed. My second thing, which is a non-agenda, and my second thing, which is a non-agenda chairperson or president of council, thank you for moving expeditiously in reference to the matter I brought to you all last week. And my third, and well, my fourth and final thought to you this evening is 
thought. As I travel and as I do what I do, I've been seeking ways to produce world peace. I know I may not see it in this lifetime, but I'm going to do as much of it as I possibly can. And I would love if some of you would work with me on a pants pull-up initiative and a cover-up initiative because our bodies are, are special. We may be exposed to environmental issues and work on a non-profanity incentive also. You can reach me at 216-548-0820. Thank you so much. Thank you, Apostolette. Shane Lowry. Good evening. My name is Shane Lowry. I live at 432 Julian Avenue, Akron, Ohio, 44310. Um, yes, last Tuesday was announced in the newspaper about North Maine. They're planning on doing a, couple, a number of things that I find irresponsible. We have seen the road diet on Kenmore Boulevard. We have seen it on the South Main Street in downtown, and we've seen it on Talmadge Avenue in my neighborhood. While Main Street and Kenmore Boulevard look, actually look rather pretty, they've destroyed the traffic patterns and forced traffic into the surrounding neighborhoods. Talmadge Avenue is a disaster. Just drive down it today. And the same problem is having. Instead of going down Talmadge Avenue, you're going down Cauga Falls and dispersing into the neighborhoods. You're going up Glen, or, okay, yeah, Glenwood Avenue and dispersing through the neighborhood. Uh, or they're taking the expressway, which is already a problem in rush hour. Now you plan on doing it for Main Street and also adding a roundabout. There is no reasonable place in any municipal, urban, or suburban area for a roundabout. Putting one on North Main Street at North Main, Howard, and High Bridge, I cannot fathom the logic involved. The, main, or the circle at Main and Mill is bad enough. You know, people don't drive down Main Street, they drive down High Street, because Main Street is basically a wreck. For traffic. If you want to go visit someplace, it might be nice, but if you're trying to get anywhere, like the hospital, either of the hospitals on off South Main, uh, you, you need to avoid Main Street because you're never going to get through. Not in anything close to a timely matter. And Talmadge Avenue, I see they put in bicycle paths. That little line of paint is not going to prevent a car from killing anyone on a bike, strolling, scooter, whatever. And everywhere else they put in bicycle lanes. That line of paint does nothing to protect anyone. I do thank you for your time, and I wish you all a great evening. Thank you, Mr. Lowry, for sharing. Good. Thank you. Joe Parker. Council members, I stand before you, uh, 2685 Shoreline, I stand before you to address the pandemic. Each time that I struck the podium represents a homicide in the Akron community since January. Yesterday was another violent weekend where senseless shootings occurred and young lives were taken from us. Today, parents are doing something that a parent <coughs> should never have to do 
and that is to make arrangements for their children. Madam President, aren't you about tired mm -hmm. speaking to the mothers and the fathers? Council members, I ask, aren't you about tired of the senseless shootings that's occurring in your wards? If that many lives have been taken in Green or Coventry, Cuyahoga Falls, or even Fairline, you better believe that some major action would be taking place. Not now, but right now. I see the time, so I'm going to continue on. Uh, in the majority, in minority community, we are not just experiencing a pandemic. We are experiencing a tsunami. We need to do something to curb this violence and this madness. Not now, but right now. I yield. Thank you so much, Mr. Parker, for those comments. LaSalle Harris. Okay. Thank you so much. So that concludes our public comments for this evening. Again, we want to thank everyone who participated. At this time, we're going to go into our committee assignments, rules, Councilman Freeman, public safety, Councilman Kamer, Budget and Finance, Councilman Freeman. Parks and Rec, Councilman Neal. Parks and Rec, Councilman Neal. Thank you. Planning and Economic Development, Councilman Fusco. Housing and Neighborhood Assistance, Councilman Fusco. Public Service, Councilwoman Samples. 2 p.m. Health and Social Services, Councilwoman Amobian. Public Utilities and Green Committee, Councilman Freeman. Is there anything else coming before council at this time? Councilman Neal. Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. Um, uh, this past weekend, I was privileged to, and, and, and honestly uh, uh, surprised um, to participate uh, in the uh, naming of the Memorial Bridge in Stowe for Congressman John Lewis. I tip my hat to Stowe City Council, to their mayor, and it, to their community. It was a beautiful event, and Akron was well represented. Um, I was touched by his uh, acting on the podium. But what I wanted to say about the John Lewis event was we've got a serious problem because I received my invitation from Stowe that was mailed out on July 2nd, on July 17th, the day of the event. And I had to think, what about those people who wait for their social security checks, their uh, medicines? This is a serious problem with the mail. And I mean, I know our mayor has spoken out of, uh, about it, but um, communities collectively, if, if we can't agree on anything else, I mean, people being able to get their mail on time uh, needs to be addressed. I mean, again, it was mailed from Stowe. I could walk there and get the letter fast enough on July 2nd. And when I got back from the event, I opened up my mail. And there was my invitation from uh, the city of Stowe on July 17th. That's unacceptable. 
like I said, I got some more I want to say, but uh, I hope all of us heard that knocking on the podium. Uh, you know, this is no criticism. We mentioned the other communities, but we rallied more for snow than we had for this gun violence. For all the county, some of you weren't here. We are the council right now. Um, I don't have the answers. I, I believe I have some. But whatever we try would be better than what we're doing right now. You know, so thank you, Madam Chair. Is there anything else coming before council at this time? Councilman Malik? Thank you very much, Madam President. Uh, just in regards to the points that Councilman Neal made in the public comment, obviously we have all seen the really staggering numbers of, of killings and it has become commonplace to open up our email every day and see the report from our police information officer and see details of uh, another murder or multiple murders. and. Uh, I know that there have been a lot of discussions. I know that everyone sitting around this horseshoe cares about this issue. Um, I know our police department and others are working hard on this issue. Uh, but I do hope that we can really uh, double down and focus more of our time on this because there's nothing more important than people feeling safe in their communities, people being safe in their communities. And I hope we can have discussions in, in public safety committee next week and in coming weeks after the break about this. I hope that when we look at the rescue plan money that we really focus that $144 million on the upstream causes of gun violence because there's nothing that we can do today to prevent a shooting tomorrow, frankly, in many cases. But there are things we can do with that money to prevent shootings two, three, four, 10, 20 years from now. So I hope we all consider that. But it's really moved by the knocking as well. Thank you so much, Councilman Malik. Is there anything else coming before council at this time? We have a motion. Do we have a second? second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. This concludes the live broadcast of Akron City Council. Margot Somerville, President of Council, presiding.